It's a bit of a shambles. It's kind of hard to know what to follow. I think the, this election is all about personality and not really about mm. politics. Um, the political discourse in this country at the moment is really at an abysmal level. What's making news is Tony Abbott's gaffe about a suppository or, you know, the sex appeal comment mm -hmm. rather than... I mean, we're a month out of the election. It's really ridiculous that, you know, that's what's making the front page of the newspapers. Why do you think that's happening, Joan? I think they're just about themselves a lot of the time. And I guess maybe we're not making enough noise of going, you need to be actually presenting yourself like the leader of our country. Your generation is sort of known as the, dis the generation that is disengaged from news. Where do you get your news? Facebook. Unless you, <laughs> well, yeah, Facebook. Yeah. I guess like if you actively, we've got the internet, which is amazing. You just type anything in Google and you'll find whatever stream mm. of info you want. I'll be. I'll be sitting in a lecture on three or four different news sites and mm. Twitter and Facebook and the New York Times and, you know, a Middle Eastern um, newspaper as well. So does that confuse people into thinking that you're disengaged? Um, I actually think there's a bit of a misconception there. I think we are engaged, mm. but I think that politicians aren't doing enough to engage us. Yeah. And our disengagement mirrors that of the general community. So I think they're trying to speak like us, but not really to us. So Kevin Rudd saying what ifs doesn't resonate with no you way. at all? No way. It's <laughs> embarrassing. I find it quite patronising, really. Yeah. The fact that they think, like, social media isn't going to win you votes from us. It can yeah. help you convey a message, but yeah. the fact that Kevin Rudd takes an Instagram of his, you know, his cut when he's shaving yeah. himself, that's not, I'm not going to vote for him because of yeah. that. And to, to think that we can't think in more than 140 characters mm. is quite condescending. It's like 140 characters doesn't necessarily give you coolness. What would unlock the power to your generation? Actually spending time with us, finding out what's going on and delivering on your word. Where is the integrity at the moment? Mm -hmm. um, I just think a lot of the stuff over the last six, ten years, they haven't quite often delivered on what they've, they've said they're going to. What is the stuff that you do every single day that you would like to see changed? I suppose for me, um, there's two issues. And one of them is my role in society. That involves cost of living, mm. employment opportunities, mm -hmm. housing, petrol prices. Um, but for me, in particular, what's important is the type of society that we live in, mm -hmm. its character and its values. Mm -hmm. And for me, um, the issue of asylum seekers is really important. I think Australia's, Australians have a value of giving people a fair thing to go, having a crap at life. And I think, I think the asylum uh, seeker issue is, is one of strength and weakness and power and powerlessness. Mm. Also, I guess for me, I work with young people every day. And the issue of mental health isn't going down, it's rising yeah. at an astronomical level. Mm. And it feels like we don't have enough solutions at the moment to help with this. And what's the big issue for you? Um, gender inequality, I would have to say, and I think it's so embedded in society that um, the way that women are portrayed, mm. um, it's not inclusive of all women either. I think there's a stereotype surrounding it and it'd be... Um, refreshing to see women in more leadership and power roles. So how do you feel about the way Julia Gillard was treated? Um, blatant sexism. How concerned are you about job security and your futures? Personally, like my experience is that I can find many different avenues and ways to get to where I want to um, and I think that's a blessing for our generation but I don't know about security, I don't know if that's a word I... Is that important to you, security or not? It is? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think for me it's it's, it's daunting that I'm going to mm. finish with a, with a good degree and I'm not sure I'm going to get a job. Mm. And I come from you know, an upper middle class family, I'm, I'm going to have a law degree and I'm not sure I'm going to be able to afford to own a house within two hours of my workplace. You can't even afford to drive to the real estate place. Like, it's, yeah. it's like a dollar fifty a litre. Like, I'm supposed to get to my job and my school and everywhere else mm -hmm. if I can't even afford to do that. Like, mm -hmm. What young people are really worried about is the type of society, mm. about our values, about asylum seekers, about same-sex marriage, about gender equality, about climate change. And all those things aren't really big ticket items in this election. That is what we care about. Mm. And you know, to tell the truth, for, for Tony Abbott in the debate the other day to come out and say that same-sex marriage isn't a priority for the Liberals, I mean, I think that's quite offensive, really. I recently went on a road trip with Oak Tree and I saw 800 young people taking the time off mm to travel to Canberra to spread a message about poverty and asking politicians to hold to their work. And do you think they are listening? Kind of. I think they listen in the moment and then they're like, well, I'm actually on to bigger things. But bigger things to who? So if you had uh, two things each that you'd like to ask from any new government, what would they be? Pass gay marriage already. Like, there's bigger <laughs> issues to worry about. Just do it. Um, 
and focus on empowering women? Um, I'd say empowering women, but I'd also say we need to take a serious look at our mental health. Yeah. A serious look because this is going to affect us for so many more years to come. Um, I'd probably like to ask both Kevin Rudd and Tony Abbott what they would do if they were in Somalia or if they were in Sri Lanka and suffering from persecution. Another one might be what steps you're currently taking to combat climate change mm -hmm. and compare that to what the scientists are telling us to do and say why is there a disparity? Are you excited about your generation? Yeah. Mm -hmm. They're phenomenal. Mm -hmm. Like. I'm so blessed to work with them every day. Like, mm. they are uh, energetic, they're passionate. I think a lot of the time our generation is portrayed as just looking inwards, mm. when a lot of the time they're fighting for things that they can't necessarily see or touch. Mm -hmm. So do you think your generation has to learn about how to communicate outwardly a little bit more? Maybe the outer needs to learn how to listen to that communication, because I think it's there, we're reaching out. The voices are there. Yeah. Much of the ears are there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs>